Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Gearhead Fellowship channel where we're continuing with our transmission rebuild on the 204R. Hopefully you enjoy today's uh, episode, if you will. We're going to go ahead and be working on the uh, direct and forward clutch uh, systems and uh, moving forward with the process on the rebuild. Hopefully you're uh, liking this. Uh, if you do, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Go ahead and uh, make some comments. Want to hear what you have to say about it. And uh, come along with me as we go ahead and try to fix this tranny up to handle some serious power. All right, so the next stage in our uh, 204-hour build, we're going to work on the uh, direct drum housing. And if you recall, the direct drum was the piece on the teardown video that showed excessive wear right in the tines, right here where the sun shell engages into the direct drum. And that was probably causing some clunking sounds inside the transmission. And who knows how long that would have held up. Probably would have given away pretty soon. So we're going to be uh, rebuilding the direct drum. This is a brand new uh, remanufactured direct drum from CK Performance. We got an aluminum apply piston here. And one of the main upgrades we've got in this section is actually a 16 spring uh, retainer, clutch retainer pack. Um, let me just show you the, uh, the one that was in the transmission when it came from Monster. This is a 10 spring clutch retainer pack. This is the... Uh, kind of the luxury car version for this transmission. You're shifting it uh, over 5,000 RPM. This is not the retainer spring system that you want. Um, so we've got a 16 spring system. This is the same thing as in all the high-end Grand National transmissions. Um, it What happens apparently with the gear ratio, this drum is rotating opposite direction of the drive shaft at 2.74 to 1 ratio in first gear. So if you wind it up to six grand, this thing is running, I don't know, about 15,000 RPM the other direction. And there's actually centrifugal force applied to the clutches inside here. It can actually cause some clutch pack application when you don't want it. And this spring retainer is going to keep that at bay. So we got a 16 spring retainer with the aluminum piston. And we're going to put all this stuff together. All right, so we have our direct drum uh, assembled with the 16 spring spring retainer and the billet piston down on the inside we've got all of the uh, frictions and steels installed we soaked the uh, frictions and steels uh, for about 30 minutes plus in some ATF and then installed everything stacked them all together we got six frictions six steels in there and uh, we've got it mounted just sitting on the center support uh, this new rollerized center support that we have so we can do some field testing of the piston so let's see how that works with our uh, air chuck you can put it here in the reverse hole and hopefully i can do this while i hold the camera and you can see the uh the piston pop up the piston seems to be working well and uh, we've mic'd off our, uh, checked our clearances on our clutch pack here. It should be anywhere from 30 thousandths to 65 thousandths. And we're making it just a little bit more than 30 thousandths. So we got a pretty tight clearance there, but we are within spec. So that's the uh, direct uh, clutch housing. We'll be moving on to the uh, forward, the billet forward drum housing assembly here. And next. this is the uh, Achilles heel for the, for the transmission. This is probably the weakest spot in the transmission from what I gather. And the forward drum is this unit right here. All right, this is the old forward drum that came out of the car, and this is the new forward drum we're putting in. And again, again this didn't show signs of failure, but I wanna point out for the one uh, transmission component that uh, Monster Transmission had, this is the forward drum. This is actually a hardened forward drum. You can see how it has kind of a black appearance to it. That's from the hardening process. Um, but that's really all that's been done to this drum. This is a factory style drum that's been hardened. Uh, the new drum that we're going in with the car is the billet forward drum from CK Performance. And it's kind of hard to tell a difference, especially in this angle. Uh, but this uh, shaft right here is uh, E4340, I believe, uh, billet steel. It's welded. You can see a heavy weld down inside. Uh, the drum seat assembly where this is just uh, machined in and, and like pressed together um, and so this unit has been roof tested to more than 1,000 foot-pounds of torque uh, the hardened systems are typically good for maybe about 500 foot-pounds of torque and that's about it so this was the main upgrade uh, for the super sport transmission from monster transmission that I had uh, along with double feeding the, the uh, direct drum uh, direct clutch but uh, the 
these are the big differences. So we're going to get ready to put this together. Uh, some other things that we got going on. Here was the original factory stamp steel piston uh, that was in the hardened drum from uh, Monster. And here we're going with the CK Performance drum with a billet piston. It's going to have greater apply, more uniform apply pressure. Uh, probably one of the other big uh, components, and this is something that Chris talks about in the build manual, is the, the ceiling rings for the forward drum. Now you can see the ceiling rings right up here. These two bands, these two kind of orange bands, you'll only see one here on the on the hardened. That's because I took it off just to show you. So this is the band that was on there. It's a it's a standard stock style ceiling ring. It's known as what it's known as scarf cut. You can see it. it you kind of split it open, and it makes it real easy to install. It'll just slide right down on there and into position. This is a solid Teflon ring that CK provides in their rebuild kits that they suggest putting on there, and the reason is. This is a spot for that's prone to leakage uh, of oil. And if you use the factory style uh, scarf cut rings, you're gonna leak. So then you got bleeding pressure and you're not gonna be able to maximize the uh, performance from your pump uh, and you might be not applying equal pressure on your clutch pack, so on and so forth. So we're gonna go ahead and, and assemble this up and then put new frictions and steels in the, in the unit, check the clearances and do the air pressure check on the billet forward drum. So folks, uh, this uh, video is taking a little bit longer than we originally expected because we ran into some clearance issues as I was setting up the uh, forward clutch system. So we've got our, our billet forward uh, drum system with the new piss and the 16 uh, uh, spring release. I'm sorry, that's on, the, on the, the direct drum. But at any rate, when you put all this together, I had brand, a brand new uh, drum, brand new piston, brand new frictions, brand new steels, all brand new parts. Everything is as thick as it could be. And one of the problems that I ran into was all this gets packaged up into that and then it gets this backing plate put in. And that backing plate is close to a quarter of an inch. It measures in at about 240 thousandths on the mic and that's the thickest backing plate that they make for the forward uh, clutch system. Uh, as it turns out, looking at the uh, at the uh, CK manual, there's like five different plate thicknesses. And you can see this one's number four. I was down there at about 242,000. So that's the, the number four. The problem is when you start off with a brand new system, brand new frictions, brand new steels, a, a custom billet, piston, everything's thicker. So actually when I packaged everything together, went to put this in, I couldn't even get it in with the snap ring. And it not only does this need to go in with all the frictions and steels, but then it needs to have 20 to 30 thousandths clearance to re to engage and release. So I had to run back to the, go back and punt, if you will, and uh, was able to get uh, a local tranny shop to find this uh, different backing plate that's thinner. It measures in at 180 thousandths. So we're gonna try some uh, interesting things here. We're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that backing plate and the frictions or the steels I should say for the forward drum and the, and the steels for the direct drum are the same kind of steels except the direct drum steels are about 15 thousandths um, thicker. So what I'm actually gonna do is put in the new backing plate, new frictions, the steels in here and I might swap two of the forward steels out for two of the direct steels and make up the 30 thousandths and then have my 30 thousandths of play. We'll see how that all works, but this is kind of one of the interesting things that I've learned in, in, in the tranny rebuild. You gotta make sure your tolerances are right, but you can mix and match different parts and pieces, uh, and there's a lot of flexibility that you can do. So just a little point to learn, I wanted to share it with y'all. And now we'll just air check that system mounted up on the center support, all new seals in it. So we'll go ahead and put some air to it and hopefully you'll be able to see the piston pop up. So what you're seeing there is there's a couple bleed holes in the back side of the uh, piston uh, to help relieve pressure, excess pressure, and that's what's bleeding off right there. But as you can see, if it's kept in, it'll stay engaged and it'll release. Hopefully you can see that. And uh, we're mic'd out. Our feeler gauge is showing about 24 thousandths of play, so we're right in between that 20 to 30 thousandths on the uh, forward drum. So here you have the fully assembled billet forward and direct drum assembly sitting on the new rollerized center support. 
We've got the center support down here where it's going to be providing the hydraulic fluid up into this system and you got the outer shell remember that was a heavily worn part from the teardown and the new billet uh, input drum this unit should be able to withstand a thousand horsepower with all brand new steels and frictions aluminum pistons heavy duty springs so this unit is ready to go so we're going to package it on up for safekeeping making sure we keep moisture and contaminants away from it and uh, get ready for the next part of the rebuild all right, folks, thanks for joining me today as we uh, worked on that uh, forward and uh, direct drum assembly for the 200. We'll be moving on to the next time, uh, working with the input uh, shaft, a billet input shaft and fourth gear uh, clutch assembly. So that'll be coming up next. If you're liking what you're seeing, go ahead and give me a like, subscribe, and uh, give me a comment at the bottom. You see something I'm doing wrong, you got a pointer, you got a question, just light it up there in the comment section. Thanks for joining.